All right, there we go. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to live number 38. It's that the title's missing in the video I'm looking at here. Well, I, sorry, I can't see the end of the title, but I think it's number 38. So um, I was gonna play that whole piece in the intro there, uh, but things got delayed. I started late and I've literally just picked up the guitar and I probably need to warm up a bit to keep those, to keep that rhythm going, those triplets going. But who's in the house? Who have we got? Um, okay, Bathing Thong. Got you on. I hope that's not saying this content's boring. I just hope you're saying you're tired. Ah, but whatever. Everyone's entitled to uh, their own opinion in that regard. Bernanator. Hi, you're first. I don't believe I've seen you on the live stream before. If not, then, then welcome. And Ben Lamau, hello again. Good to see you again. Kuji's in the house. Good to see you again. Uh, we've got Shinro Gane. Uh, hi, I guess uh, from Japan. It's good to see you. Jeremiah, good to see you again. Noah, hey Noah. Right, so, hope you all had a great week last week. Um, I had a pretty productive week last week, so if you've missed it on my channel, I, well, I do the live streams on the Monday, like I'm doing now, and then, um, what did I do? Tuesday, I did like some D-A-E-A C-sharp, D-A-E C-sharp A-E chords, which was good fun, and then, um, what did I do after that? I'm doing too many videos, I guess. Um, I did something else, and then it was the modern baseball video on the Friday, I think. And um, oh yeah, it was uh, if the if a math rock guitarist tries to solo, and uh, that was just another never meant meme video basically. But on the Friday, I liked that video. I did. Um, if you're familiar with the song Your Graduation by Modern Baseball, it was one of those breaking that chord progression down and looking at what makes it special, what makes it tick, what makes it glue together so well. And I've been meaning to do one of those for a while, and I do really enjoy making those style videos, so I will be doing a bunch of those in the future, and perhaps uh, looking at something that's more within the you know the math rock vein of things. I know Modern Baseball is more obviously but pop punk emo stars of music but you know I do enjoy that band so I thought I'd have a go at that one so Sarah um love that song excellent stuff and um, Kuji yeah <laughs> like I said you're in the house hey Ali good to see you um okay <laughs> morning <laughs> it is indeed uh, so we will be getting ready for our classes soon um so Ali and I uh, teach at the same place um okay we've got Jesus Nada um, I guess it's, yeah. What have we got? I love you. I love you. You, you, W, U. I'm not, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Greetings from Peru. But lovely to see you. Isn't it quite late there now? I'm not sure what time zone that one's on. Okay. Right. So um, with this video, I, I was thinking, well, I, basically, I went away for the weekend. I got back last night. And I was like, what can I do for the live stream? And I was thinking perhaps I'll go over a few like beginner style or easier style like math, almost math rock kind of style riffs. And I perhaps thought I'd just break them down and give you some tips on how to play them. And I think it might be useful for you. So if you end up enjoying this, please let me know and I'll make some more of these style videos for you uh, in the live streams. So, oh, we got, um, hello. I was from Saudi Arabia. Good to see you. Okay, um, what have we got here? Jathinia, Jathinia, could you call out my friend Anubis? He's a math rock fan. So, hey Anubis, um, if you're watching, probably not. Not many people watch this, but... Um, so, let, let's get stuck into it. And as usual, with these live stream videos, um, you know, I do a bit of lesson content at the start, and then um, we can just set a theme for today's talk, and we can chat back and forth, uh, try and answer my questions. The, your questions, sorry, not my questions, your questions the best I can, but do bear in mind, I'm no expert on this, it's just all my own thoughts and opinions. And as always, I encourage you to help each other out, have a chat in the in the chat there to answer, uh, to add some more, basically, some help there for everyone else. So, and um, I've got, again, still struggling with sinus problems, so I am breathing through my mouth, unfortunately, so I do apologize if this if this is a very breathy live stream in that regard. So, um, what we're we talking about today. So, like I said, we're going to be learning the riff 
uh, the main riff basically from the song Camp Adventure uh, by Delta Sleep. And I've got the chords on screen here and I've got the album it's from as well, uh, Management. And um, yeah, Ali's in the house here. We, we were actually, um, we were talking about this record uh, when I met him last Friday. And uh, so I had a good, we had a good discussion about it and you know I listened to it again last night before uh, just to refresh my memory of it because I haven't listened to it in a fair few months and it's um, very different like some really cool ideas on that record the management one but the newer stuff definitely seems more you know they took the best ideas and refined those um, but there is some really cool stuff on that record but you can still, you can hear the early days of that Delta Sleep sound. And I believe Ali said to me that it might be even a different drummer or a bass player on that particular EP. Uh, but when I searched on the internet last night, I couldn't find any info about that. Okay, thanks Ali. Yeah, different bass player and drummer. Uh, okay, there we go. So the, it has a different feel to it, definitely with the drums, I would say. But still, fantastic. Sounds very... To me, it sounds much more like um, like bands like Color that later became like Tangled Hair, and there's a lot of um, a lot of the songs as well have like that very like Japanese almost like math rock inspired sound for some of the intros to the songs. I felt like which was which was cool. So anyway, I digress. Uh, back to this chord progression. So if you got a guitar handy, it's pretty simple. Just three chords for this one. So what I'd like you to do first. Um, I'm going to take this from a very like beginner perspective here. So if you're familiar with a power chord, you can go up to the the seventh fret on the A string and play like a E power chord. So something you've probably learned already. And all you need to do here to make this first chord is take this highest note and then take it down one fret. So I would probably voice this with my um, my index, little finger, and uh, ring finger. So that would be how you verse the for, sorry voice the first chord. And you're going to be playing in triplets on this one. So that means each beat has um, you know three beats to it before the next one starts. So if you were to count like one, two, three, four, you would have do -do 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 -do. so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So that, it's actually quite a tricky piece in that regard to keep up the keep it uh, keep up the th with the tempo of it. So I recommend playing with your fingers and keeping the same picking pattern like that. So you use your thumb and your index and your middle finger. And just like set a metronome at a comfortable speed and just go along with that. But you want to get that kind of, it's got that kind of bouncy feel to it, right? Because of the triplets, like one, two, triple, 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 So that would be for the first chord. So take a power chord and then flatten that highest note. For the second chord on the chart here, um, this is a G minor, uh, a G sharp minor, sorry. And for this one, you'll be moving your little finger here down to the 11th fret on the A string. And then your I'd play with your middle finger on the 9th fret on the D string. And then your index finger on the 9th, uh, sorry, the 8th fret on the G string. Like that. It's the same picking pattern again. Nothing's changed there. So moving from that first chord, so take your power chord flatten it. Um, I did say use your little finger, but actually looking at it now, index, ring, middle works better there. Because it leaves your little finger free now to switch to that. Because the, the, again, the chord changes are very quick as well. You need to hit that one of the next bar, right? So if you've got your little finger free here, you can easily get that over there for the next chord. So if you can stretch, you could just keep these, your, your middle, and your ring in the same place. And then that would lead it to the last chord, where basically now you invert these two fingers. So now your little finger will come to the 11th fret on the D string. And if you can manage it, your, um, just the, sorry, that's the name of the EP. Um, then you can use your ring finger 
on the 10th fret here. So now you've got the smoothest movement possible because this progression is, you know, it's up, up tempo. So you want to be able to ch change as smoothly as possible. So thinking about the fingering there. So start with this, uh, with your index ring middle. And then practice changing, tra practice it like this if you can do the stretch. Then your little finger down to the 11th fret. And then invert these two fingers. And there you've got it. Whoops. See, I'm out of practice on this riff as well, so. And then that last change there. Um, if you can't play it that way, then I still start this riff the same way. So you can quickly bring your little finger over to the 11th fret here. And then in this regard, use your middle finger and your index for the other two notes. So you got this like uh, straight, not a line, what, what, what am I thinking of? But it goes across like that. And then all you would need to do now is again, invert the middle finger and your little finger. And then you're at the end of the riff there. So that'd be one way to, two ways, sorry, to finger this for the smoothest and quickest movement with that um, riff. Right, um, hey, Spooky, good to see you again. Uh, it was just learning this today for an open mic. <laughs> Excellent stuff, yeah. Um, so actually, when I originally like tabbed out this song, um, I think I've got that somewhere with the, the old window capture here. Um, now, let's get that behind. So. Yeah, I did this song a long time ago on my channel, like back in within the first year or two, so 2016, 2017. I tabbed it out in A major, but looking at it last night, to me, it sounds like it's in B major. But if you would like that tab, then I'll make that uh, available. Well, it's al already available to patrons on Patreon, but I'll put it up as this live stream video so you can find it quickly. Um, so I tabbed out the transcribes the other guitar part as well. So all of the uh, little melody lines and also the the bit later on in the song with the, you know, the, um, whoop, help if I add some volume, uh, you know, from that part there. What's that? Yeah, I haven't played that in a while, but yeah, uh, that part's there as well, the, the lovely bridge section. Okay, let's remove that off the picture. No, nope, that's not the right one. <laughs> there we go. The wonders of OBS. Um, yeah, so what made me, so to, to get back to that B major thing, so if you take a look at the chords that I've got on the left side of the screen here, so the E major seven with no third, basically you need a seventh degree or a third degree to define if a chord's whether it's major or minor. Um, if you were, here for last week's live stream, I gave you the reason and explanation for that. Um, so we could say this is an E major seven for the sake of simplicity. Um, there would be other ways of phrasing this chord, but it makes sense as an E major seven in the progression of B major. Because if I was to play these chords as full chords, let's say let's play a like an E major nine there. When we come down to the G minor chord, that definitely sounds like a G major, but if I to play, if I was to play like an F sharp minor here chord instead, now it sounds out of key with the song, right? Yeah. So I think instead this is a um, it's a dominant chord, so that would make it the fifth. So it would be in, um, if you know your keys, then this is going to be B major instead. And that's where, that's where how I, that's how I came about to think that this is, this is actually in B major and not um, A major. If it was A major, then this would be the um, an F sharp minor chord instead, basically. And it doesn't really sound like that. You know, that sounds really out with the with the progression, right? Um, 
that seems to fit fit better the dominant sound there so that's how i came to uh, that conclusion and that concludes that little segment there so feel free to take the the shapes that i've got on screen there the last thing to mention is we've got an e major seven with no third the next chord is clearly a g sharp minor you know you've got your roots minor third and the fifth but the last chord though um we've got roots f sharp fifth and a major sixth interval so i couldn't work out what this chord was when i put it into um like chord deducing software you know tell me what this chord is even that was having a hard time working out what chord it is so i'm just going to call it an f it's f sharp it's meant to be the dominant sound right but it's replacing that to fit it basically is to fit within the confines to keep this um uh, d sharp notes going right every chord has it in it right this is what your ears relating to in this regard and um, the last thing you could take from this is you could take this progression move it around of course but you could take it and make it into full chords kind of thing and um, have a bit of fun with it so with your like your um, E major chord there and then with the minor chord G sharp minor and then coming to that dominant sound almost jazzy right <laughs> to that dominant sound yeah but yeah I'll stop there before I go off <laughs> and lose everyone um, so feel free yeah there's the chords for you I'm just extending this longer than it needs to be um, enjoy those chords it's a wonderful song and um, that leads us on to the the next part I prepared um, which was if you haven't heard this version oh, again image you need to be you need to be at the bottom <laughs> there we go um so this is from delta sleep when they went to tokyo japan they did a camp adventure uh live from this bridge and i don't know why the video is not showing for that oh there we go now it's working nope now it's not working now it's working <laughs> so if you haven't checked out this like live rendition it's a wonderful thing and i'll flip over there and take you through a bit but basically they play on this overpass um in japan and they you know play this song acoustically you hear all of the what's going on around them and stuff and it's just a wonderful li little video and they, they later they put this on the the soft sounds ep so it's part of that you've probably you might have seen it on there if you've done that and they, they did a bunch of songs in japan like you can see strong funny is another one uh, they did up here and uh, let me just get back over to obs stop sharing that one there we go and um actually the, i think it was either the first or second time i went to tokyo with mountains i, I, I said to ali um you know let's try and find that bridge <laughs> find that same overpass and do our you know we'll, we'll do this song because it's not it's not too difficult to learn right and actually the first time we went the um which record store was it again i forget the name now uh, like a fool no friend of mine i can't remember which record shop it was but we did some um acoustic covers in there i wish i'd loaded that up now give me a second um i'll find it It won't take me two seconds mountains um we did um american football honestly that was it and um is it gonna pop up yeah there we go i found it and um, we did it with, um, I think his name's Ben. He was in Cats, Cats and Cats. Um, bear my ignorance on things like this. So if I bring that live back up now, there we go. So this is from 2015, as you can see, uh, quite a while ago. And um, yeah, we did the acoustic of honestly. It's, it's okay, it's fun. So go and check that one out if you, if you have chance. Okay, right. Um, I'm gonna jump back over to the chat now. Yeah, like a full records, that was one. Yeah, we covered American football. 
<laughs> okay, so I'm back over to the I'm back over to the chat now. So if you've got questions, you can throw them in there. And I hope that little segment was useful. Please let me know if you'd like to see you know more of that in the future. Um, I know that riff could be quite simple, but I just wanted to give some tips, like maybe you hadn't thought about the you know the positioning of your fingers and stuff to get through that riff uh, smoothly. So and um, potentially how you could expand it into bigger chords, basically. All right, so where were we? Okay, uh, okay, re revealing knowledge. Um, okay, tell us how to get that nice, tasteful, delta sleep, glitchy tone, thoughts. Um, okay, so I'm not really, that's not really my forte about pedals and stuff, but if I remember watching the audio tree session, it was the, when they do that, you know, the hold kind of sound, you know, that stutter kind of thing. I believe that's the Boss DD3, which I did have, but I just gave that to, to Ali to um, to have. And um, if you put it on like the lowest delay setting and use the hold function, it does do that infinite, you know, repeat kind of thing. And you got to play the note first. So hit it, then hold it, and then it would just repeat that one. Okay, thanks, Ali. You'd have a better idea on this. So yeah the dd6 okay that's the one dd3 does the same thing but you have to keep your foot on the pedal ah, okay uh, they sound to me as well if it is the dd6 they sound quite different in the way they do that hold function thing i know other people use the line six as well because it can do that um glitch delay kind of sound perhaps someone else knows better than me um in the chat here so you can if you could give your generous input that would be great okay Right, so moving on down. All uh, right, so we got um, Hexatics. So hey, Steve, first time chatter here. Well, welcome. Good to see you. Have you got any recommendations playing math rock on on an acoustic guitar? Okay. Um, well, you could learn this song for one. <laughs> this one was originally on an acoustic guitar. On um, on Twin Galaxies, they did it as an electric version, and in my opinion, they didn't really cut it as well as this acoustic rendition. Um, but that song's also, it's still fun. But um, I would recommend finger style, of course. And I would recommend starting with probably this song. If you want to um, challenge yourself and something that's a bit more tricky, when I was playing acoustic, I, I just learned a bunch of acoustic style math rock songs. And most of those were on the Animals uh, album by TTNG. So if you also, um, sorry, not that one, the, the one before, the original one. Is that just self-titled, I think, that one? You have to, I, I, I do apologize, I'm, I'm terrible with album names. So on that one, there's I'll, th I'll Forget About You Throwing That Rock because that dance, cause that dance was kind of funny. That one I did a cover of, and it's the only part of that song that's really, really difficult is the is the bridge section, which has just got this stupid run that's really high up on the acoustic. And again, I did cover that one, and I did... I'm f not sure... I didn't provide... Did I provide tabs? Again, we're going back a few years here. Give me a second. Oh, I can get the Delta Sleep stuff off screen now, I guess. Um, chords, by chords, there we go. Right, um, let me find that one quickly. I'll forget about you. There we go, I did find it. Interesting to see what comes up when I, when I search. <laughs> um, Live, there we go. Yeah, so the top one there. This town needs guns. I'll forget about you throwing that rock because, you know, that dance was kind of funny. I think I provide the, the tab link on that one there. And that, that's a fantastic song to learn on acoustic. And the bit I'm playing there that's higher up on the fretboard is the part I'm talking about. There's this, just this, like, kind of triplet, if I remember, slide part. And it's, it's pretty difficult to pull off. All right then. And, uh, just interesting to see the other videos that come up. All right, then um, bring it back over here. But thanks for the question. I I would suggest starting off with some easier songs like this uh, Delta Sleep one. Um, at the start of, um, sorry, you know, even at the end of the newest um, 
it's again to get the Dao to sleep. I know at the end of uh, like the start of soft sounds, they do um, sultans of ping acoustic style. So you could learn that. Also on the newest one, the last track is acoustic as well. I know it's not strictly math rock, math rock the way it's been played, but they're definitely good ways to start learning, uh, you know, acoustic style. But <laughs> It's just the, the, it seems to be more of like a singer songwriter kind of approach with most of those songs. And not many of them are going to use bends because it's an acoustic, but I know that TTNG song does. So that's another really d difficult thing with that track. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, I'm no expert on that. I haven't had an acoustic in about four or five years. Um, I actually brought mine all the way from England and then I sold it like an idiot. Because it was a nice, like a Taylor Big Baby acoustic. It was, it was a nice acoustic. I wish I'd, I'd wish I'd kept that around. I'm not gonna lie, um, but that that would be my advice for you. Another thing, if you've picked up my Math Rock E Guide as well, the guitar one, there's a whole section on you know finger picking patterns and stuff like that. That will definitely help you out as well. And it's not even. It's all about the technique on this, on this hand it starts with. So you're not even placing your hand on the fretboard, but it's looking at, you know, uh, popular picking patterns that you would come across. Uh, but it starts off with the really simple stuff, you know, going between two, two fingers. And the way I see it as well is always um, just a quick tip is dedicating one finger to each string really helps you. Um, it's going to help you help you learn riffs and also just improve your playing in general. Because if you're using a different finger to play a different string for a riff and stuff, it, you're going to get it's going to become confusing really quickly. So if you if for me, I always cover the low E and the A with my thumb. This one's dedicated here. And then the, depending on the riff, if it's starting from the A string, for example, then my index is going to take care of the, the D string, middle on the G, um, ring on the B, a little finger on the E. You know, that kind of rolling motion. And well, uh, to be fair, they're always there, to be honest. They're always dedicated to those strings, and my, my thumb takes care of these top two. And when it's um, something like this, same thing again. My middle's taking care of the, you know, the G string, and my index is on the uh, on the D string there. Those kind of things that are a bit more technical. And in my experience, the hardest one is um, getting this, getting this little guy <laughs> involved, <laughs> because you can't just get away with just using your um, your index, your middle, and your your ring finger for a lot of things. But sometimes this guy needs to get involved, especially if your finger style. Because you'll find a lot of riffs, popular songs that you learn, especially finger style, don't really ever include the little finger. Like an Englishman in New York. I, f I can't even remember what the original question was. Oh, it was learning acoustic, right? <laughs> but <laughs> finger, use the fingers. That's that's the that's the end of there. Right. Um, okay. So carrying on. Well, we haven't got that much questions anyway, so I can get through stuff today. So I got about um, another 15, 15 minutes before I need to shoot. I got my first lesson to teach at half past. Right. Um, Okay, uh, revealing knowledge that thanks is such a great sound. Kind of glitchy tape delay. So maybe what they're doing in that regard is probably got a delay after the 
the glitch so meaning that when you put it on not the glitch but when you put that hold function on the there's still a delay pedal after if you get me so it's feeding into that that delay pedal um and like looking at the the Strymon um El Capistan can kind of do those things because of the multi-head mode so like the rhythm it would do <laughs> it's a cool pedal but they all get mixed together if you pick them and then it sounds like this chorus modulated reverb in a way right instead versus Yeah. Um, again, I'm. I made a. You know, the the latter half of this year, I've been trying to learn my pedals a bit more and getting some use out of them. Um, so you can currently see part of my pedal board here. Uh, but I, I'm limited set to seven pedals because my power supply does seven outputs. Um, but um, I was again talking to Ali about this. But the 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 bus tuner does have an extra out on it, so I could chain another pedal to it. But I plan to just buy another power supply and then I can expand the board again but I thought just limiting myself at the moment and then um, getting to really know these pedals because they, they have a lot of functions especially like the the El Capistan by Strymon and this this Maris pedal and then obviously the Boss synth can go on for days yeah revealing knowledge the El Cap is, is a really good pedal um, and I, again on the subject of pedals I, was, I posted a picture on Instagram of like my pedal board a year ago versus what it's like now basically and the only two pedals that have survived oh uh, sorry yeah the only two i had at the time were this maris and the jhs and then everything else on that board is gone but the this this morning glory and the maris reverb and this compressor they've probably been around the longest on this board if anything though the uh, tu2 is the oldest here because i had that back at the start of mountains when I borrowed borrowed it uh, I think I ended up buying it off Ali um, to just have a tuner on stage when we were playing and, and and mute the guitar as well between songs but there was the longest time and like two or three years of doing the band where I didn't even use pedals and it was just just that single tuner pedal and it, and then um, just off a, on another tangent from that tangent but <laughs> When, when people were making those videos, like, I turn all my videos, all my um, pedals on at the same time kind of thing. Um, mm. You know, I thought of doing that video and it literally just be, back then it would have just been the tuner. So play a chord and here's with all my pedals on and then there'd just be no sound <laughs> after that one. But I decided against that. Unless if it was like an April's Fool style videos. Hey, right, Tube Amp Cat, thank you. Good to see you again. And thanks for the, thanks for the super chat there. Hey, good to, yeah, you made it. Um, got about 10 minutes, so get your questions in. Right, carrying on down, who have we got? Okay, RZ. Hi, Steve. Uh, I'm guessing you do these live streams every Sunday around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm doing these from 9.30 a.m. Uh, Korean Standard Time. So I'm not sure what time that would be for you. Basically... Um, this is the only time, well, this is the best time I worked out because with my working hours, technically I should be at work right now, uh, but I'm doing this with you, so please don't tell anybody, <laughs> but um, I have my first class at like half 10, so I start at half nine, I do 50 minutes, then I, you know, get ready for that class. Um, so I do it at this time because it's, um, for most people in the States, it's still Sunday evening, so it's possibly a better time for you to watch and I've been doing these at 9.30 Korean Standard Time, so if you, uh, Monday, so if you type whatever time that is, I'll do like a global coordinated, universal coordinated time perhaps announcement, but I need to be better at promoting these, I must admit, and give everyone like a, a, a coordinated time there. Um, but for now, yeah, it's 9.30 Korean Standard Time, Monday. Um, then perhaps it's going to change again, um, depending on what my working hours are uh, basically for next next semester in that regard. But yeah, 
you you are right. It's probably 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, seven maybe 7.30, I guess. And recently, I know the clocks, daylight saving just happened, so it could be earlier uh, for most of you as well. Okay. Oh, thanks for the input here, uh, Ali. So you got a, I guess it's a French math rock band, acoustic drum math rock band in the vein of Toe. Yeah, I forgot about Toe. Toe do a bunch of acoustic songs. Um, well, the, most of them are done on a, um, a classical, actually, but you could obviously just play them on an acoustic. Okay. Um, um, sorry, I can't read your name, uh, but I take it you're either f uh, from Russia, I guess, but um, as an Azek, Zek, Zen, I'm, I'm not even going to, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not even going to try that. Um, advantages of the headless guitar. Well, there's, there's a few. Uh, this is, you know, very small, very easy to take around. The, on this one, the, the, the application for it is designed for like lower tuning. So you notice the frets are fanned. So you get a multi-scale. So from here to here is like, I think 20, 27 inches. So it's longer. So it means you've got more tension on the string, which means when you down tune it, it doesn't get, you know, it's got less risk of sounding, um, you're waving out a tune if, if that's the, the correct analogy there. So you've got more tension, better for lower tuning, but then your higher strings, like, I think this is like 20, 25, I think it is on the, on the, on the higher side here, obviously it's going to change micro, uh, like a little bit for each string. As you can see, basically the frets are coming inwards here, but they're going outwards here. Uh, so that would be an advantage there. It's definitely made for more of that lead style of playing and uh, down tune stuff. Uh, I say that because the radius is like 16, so it's very flat. So when you do like play bar chords, it can get uncomfortable really quickly uh, because also the neck is, is also very thin on this one. Um, so I tend to not play the way that I would play, you know, my regular Telecaster with this guitar, but it is, the action is super low. It's just really, really easy to get, um, I've still got the delay on me. <laughs> I just don't have any problem of getting across this fretboard. It's also like the heel on it as well makes it super easy to access these these higher frets down here. I must admit it's confusing for me having 24 frets. I've never really had guitars with that on, so I do get lost quite often on this. Um, okay, tuner stability because of this locking system. It rarely goes out of tune, to be honest, and it's got a roasted maple neck, so the neck doesn't really move on it as well. Um, so that would be if I had to give some advantages of a headless guitar, um, I think those are the main ones, unless if someone add, can add more. I'm still very new to this game. So, I, you know, this is, um, you know, a GOC, so G-O-C guitars, um, SH-6, which means single humbucker. And um, my name's this, not Stephen Hazel, but <laughs> um, it kind of looks like it's my signature model in that regard, right? But I, I had some input in designing this. You know, I really wanted the Telecaster bridge pickup. Um, they said they couldn't do one for the neck, but I said, I really want this mint green pick guard kind of thing. So in the future, I'm thinking about changing this to a, a P90 um, in a humbucker size, you know, like a Seymour Duncan one. I really want to change this bridge. It's, it's, it's Telecaster style, but it's way too, way too bright um, and thin sounding, you know, versus the, the bridge. So. I mean, so it's okay, but if I A, B it with the, the other telecast, you, you'll hear that this is very shrill. Obviously, you can turn the tone down. It doesn't make... T no, completely off. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference in that in that regard. But, um, you know, I'm not bothered by that. I, I like companies that, like the, that do, like... Um, that take care of like making sure that the everything's nice, the fret works nice, the neck's all good, the body's all good. And I don't really care if they save money on the electronics because that's something that is is changeable, right? But the, if the body sucks, if the neck sucks, there's, you know that's a bit more problematic. So, um, so those are two things that I will eventually swap out on this. But apart from that, you know, it's like a 
On this guitar, it's a nitro finish, so I've already chipped it in a whole lot of places, so it wears really quickly, so it will relic and look uh, quite nice in that regard. Yeah, but all of these guitars definitely make me play a different way. Okay, five minutes, let's see what we got. So, RZ, yeah, so that's 7.30, okay, Eastern Standard Time. Um, you could do a premiere for your YouTube stream. Ah, uh, okay. So, you mean when I set it up, it, I can choose a premiere on live? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm terrible with that kind of thing. I believe it does show to subscribers that there's a live stream coming up. My hope was that I just keep doing this and then, you know, more and more people will come. Um, but I, I just like hanging with you, everyone, and just talking about, you know, things that we enjoyed. So, it doesn't really how many, pe how many people show up, but the more the merrier, we could say in that regard. Um, Alexi, that's it. Yes, I got your name. Yeah, sorry, Alexi. Yeah, good to see you again, by the way. Right. Yeah, tube amp camp. Interesting guitar. Twangy bridge and a jazzy neck pickup. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good in the middle in that regard, but I'm still going to change. Well, I might keep the neck pickup. I do, I do like that one. But again, these are these good guitars are designed for you know, gents, they're basically modern kind of tones. So they are really, really high output compared to my uh, my other telly. So, for example, with this, with my Rev D20, um, um, like the volume I'm getting now, if I was to put this guitar in and play it, it would be a much quieter volume because these are much higher output pickups. Uh, so I have a different... Um, amp model set on the D20 for when I play, you know, this guitar. So it brings the, the volume a bit more in line. Okay. <laughs> yeah, revealing knowledge. You can put that thing in any tuning and not get floppy. That, that That's basically it. But I'm always playing in standard. But if you drop it down to like, say, um, if we go down E, like, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember what tuning, like I went down, a whole tone one time and that that sounded really nice in that regard okay um mm. tube amp cat um what's the, the the neck made of i guess deck made of the neck i guess you meant this is roasted roasted maple so it's um because there's no stripe on the back they put the uh you know the the truss rod in the top so it is a um a different piece of maple for the top but it's matched quite well to be honest compared to some guitars that i've seen um but it's a very it's almost a flat back on this um on this neck and it's a it's an incredibly thin neck and um i don't mind that like i said it, it gets a bit uncomfortable after a while when playing chords and stuff but for that for the lead kind of work it works ever so well for that all right then um Okay, green. So I'm not in Japan. Um, I'm in Korea. I'm just over the road from 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 Japan. But just uh, I've been with been to Tokyo twice. I've been to Japan a few times. But the two times I went to Tokyo was with with the band. Um, there are plenty of good venues in Tokyo. I couldn't really name any to be honest with you. Uh, but the music is everywhere there, and it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> really, really is. It's, it's a wonderful place. Oh, the body tube amp cat. Um, this is ash. And it, it looks like I was trying to find a seam on it the other day, but it looks like it's one piece. And I guess because the body is so small, they can keep it as one piece in that regard. Because I can't see a single seam um, around around the edge on this thing. So, which is cool. It's light. That's for sure. Um, Oh, okay, visited. Yeah, uh, thing is, like, there's there's gigs happening all the time, Greens, and they're all like, you know, if you go to like Shibuya or something like that, there's just so many venues and so many bands. You don't have to look harder; just find the bands that you want to see, and they will tell you where they're playing. <laughs> That'd be my best advice. <laughs> okay, um, all right, I'm gonna have to shoot. So we've got any last questions before I go? But th this was fun. Um, so next week I'll think of another riff. I'm thinking more of like in the vein of beginners style riffs, not necessarily just you're new to guitar, but perhaps you're new to looking at 
getting into math rock? What's a good song to bridge into playing uh, this this um, this style? Is what I would go with. So this week we had um, Delta Sleep with Camp Adventure. I think of one for next week. Well, perhaps I'll talk about a different topic. It really depends on what I do in that week. Sometimes it sets up a nice topic for the for the live stream. So okay. Yeah, okay, Tubank Cup, yeah, this ash, an ash body, yeah, it does, does sound, a, I mean, it's quite resonant for how small it is. Okay, revealing knowledge, they just said they picked up one of the Charvel Telecasters. I haven't tried one, to be honest. Uh, I um, When was it? Last weekend, uh, I went down to Busan, because there's a few guitar shops down there, so I went uh, with my, my oldest son, and... Um, you know, I took him a few places and then I was like, okay, we'll just pop into the guitar shop on the way home. And um, they had a few guitars there. So I went through a whole bunch of them, but they didn't, they didn't have any Charvel uh, stuff in there. Uh, but I do know the models. I've, see, I've seen them online, but I'm sure they're wonderful things. Those um, Charvel, is that, is that made by Fender now? Am I thinking of a different company? Could be, but um, in the, in the, uh, Ensenada factory in Mexico, perhaps a Fender one. Okay, the uh, the ganja mon, <laughs> great sign on. How do you keep up with multiple tunings at once? Well, I, I have multiple guitars, so I could throw them in different tunings if if I want to. But um, jokes aside, I, do, I tend to play in standard most of the time. But you know, the the blue Telecaster at the moment is in D A E A C D A E C sharp. No, D A E A C sharp E tuning. I'll get that right one day. And then you may notice the other Telecaster, which is new. Um, you'll have a video about my new guitar coming. Hopefully this Friday I'll put a video out about that. And then no one's no one's mentioning the butchered Talman in the background. <laughs> Again, that's another story. We, I'll get to that later. Um, okay, Chibam Cat, you're gonna order a seven string. Ah, okay, multi scale from Alufia next year. Okay, I hope that works out. I hope that's a fun guitar. Uh, greetings from Wisconsin. Thanks for the awesome content. Thank you, Andre. Okay, revealing knowledge. Yes. <laughs> no, okay, whatever that's in <laughs> terms to. <laughs> um, but thank you. Okay, Jamori. 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 Mo. I got, I got a teach scene and I can't even speak. Um, thanks for the episode. Just had a dart sleep for a band cap. Really like them. Yeah, they're an excellent band. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yes, Charvel is now a property offender. That is correct. I was correct, yeah. Okay, yes. Thank you, Ali. The drummer from Agatha is a promoter in Tokyo. Find him for good Tokyo shows. There we go. That That is some good advice there for shows. All right. Thanks, Tim. Okay, I got to shoot everyone. And uh, I want to say thanks for joining today and I'll be back next Monday with another live stream. There'll be some content this week, hopefully a video on Wednesday and then on Friday I'll have hopefully a video about my new Telecaster and I can't wait to show you that one. All right then. Yeah. Okay. Revealing knowledge. I got that. Yep. Oh, okay. Hey Tim from Ohio. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great week and I'll see you all next Monday. Okay. Goodbye everyone. Thanks, Tube Amp Cat. <laughs>